you are truly our chocolate something amazing. <laughs> and again, we thank you so much for being here tonight. And with that, I believe it's time for us to get ready to head over to our mind, body, and spirit segment in just a moment. Tonight, we are continuing this discussion on Define the Odds. We've got a great guest that will, I hope, help shed some more light on lupus from a different perspective because she's coming from a wellness standpoint, okay. a holistic point of view. And again, it's all about the mind, the body, spirit, and you. So, Lakia, take it away. Thank you so much, Nicole. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to your Mind, Body, and Spirit segment. I am Lakia L.B. Brandenburg, and each week I highlight different ways for you to incorporate wellness in your everyday lives. It's all about, do you know it by now, feeding the mind. Strengthening the body and empowering the spirit. And tonight's special guest is going to help us do just that. She is a doctor. The doctor's in the house. She's a naturopathic physician. I can't wait for her to tell us about this. She specializes in providing natural forms of dis disease management and prevention services. So as we were learning more about lupus, hopefully she can touch bases on this, on how she can help. She is also very passionate about the synergy of the mind, body, and spirit and believes in the healing of them collectively to enhance the life experience of each of her patients. Her firm belief is that better health equates to a better quality of life and she is committed to helping the patients in her care achieve and maintain them both. Please help me welcome to the show, I can't wait to talk to her, Dr. Tawana Houston, welcome. Thank you so much for having me here today. All right, doctor. Now, we're going to have to learn. Now, I want to learn about a little bit. I want to know about lupus. I want to learn more about all this, these things that are going on. But naturopathic physician, what is that? Naturopathic medicine is a very uh, unique uh, form of health and healing where we are combining not just science, but also art and philosophy around healing. Uh, we are looking at the root cause of what is going on with the body. So we are not looking to just address the symptoms because you can quiet the symptoms in the body. But if you have not changed what is happening at the root level, there's no cellular change and the disease is still there. And uh, so as a naturopathic doctor, we are looking at the whole clinical picture and utilizing those natural therapies to stimulate the body's built in self repair mechanisms because our body is designed to do everything <laughs> that it needs to do to survive as well as thrive. And so when uh, we're working with the body, we are moving all of those barriers out of the way naturally to get the body back to where it needs to be uh, by uh, working with patients with diet and lifestyle, uh, nutritional supplements, uh, as well as botanical herbs, uh, physical medicine, such as hydrotherapy, and uh, also just uh, everything that is just a lot less invasive to help the patient get back to their whole health and wellness. You do a lot. You do a lot. But one thing that you said that struck home was that the body can heal itself. And I often heard that, you know, our body, you know, has everything it needs to heal ourselves from the outside, you know, from the inside out. But for some reason, we run to medication. So are you against medication for healing or do you just have a more natural approach to to it overall? Uh, no, I am not against medication because. It really depends on the patient. It depends, and each person is different. It depends on where they are and how far their degree, their disease has progressed. And those patients need some medication to get it to a level of management or, or else they're looking, they're right at death's door. And so you want to get a patient at a level of where their disease is being managed. And then naturopathic medic medicine can come in and support the efficacy, uh, meaning um, the, the healing process of the pharmaceutical drugs. And it can also help in terms of helping the patient to titrate down or reducing uh, the amount uh, or the dosage of the drugs or how often they have to take it. And then there are some patients that can uh, fully progress off of the drugs totally. And so it's just really going to depend on uh, where the patient is when they come seeking help. So the medication can actually aid in what you want to do with your naturopathic, you know, 
I guess, procedures or modifications. Now, quick question for you. What are some common diseases that you see come into your practice? We have a young lady, of course, with Nicole that was talking about lupus and a few other different um, diagnoses that she had. But what are some common pra um, diseases that you see come into your practice? I see a variety of diseases, but some of the most common ones are going to be the people with chronic illnesses such as hypertension, uh, diabetes. Uh, I see a lot of uh, hypothyroid conditions, um, as well as uh, people with uh, high cholesterol and uh, fibroid tumors and uh, endometriosis and PCOS. Do you see a lot of African-American males or women or... Is there a certain dynamic that, that comes into your office? Right now, uh, the majority are women. So how do we, okay, knowing this, this is like really statistical and understanding that women are experiencing these diseases on, and, you know, at high rapid speeds in a way, right? So how do we, I guess, start changing our lifestyle? If I've never heard of a naturopathic um, phys physician and know that this practice is out there, what can I start doing as a female to start transforming my life. The biggest thing as a female that you can do is learn to put yourself first. Okay, I want you to say that again. I want you to look into the camera and say that again. Which camera can she look into? I need you to look into the camera with the red light. Tell them again. The biggest thing that you can do as a female is put yourself first. How do you do that? By realizing that if you are not here, if you are in the bed crippled over in pain, then nothing else is going to get accomplished anyway. But when you are practicing self-care and eating right, uh, exercising, staying well hydrated, uh, staying positive, then those things that you are doing for yourself are going to transfer over into all aspects of your life with your family, uh, with your spouse, with your children, with your work, with whatever community involvement you're in, because you are a better you and a better version of you creates a better family and a better community. She preaching. Hope you're taking notes. I love it. Thank you so much for that. That was so powerful. So once I realized that I have to take care of me first, but I'm ready to come see you because I'm dealing with an ailment. What is my first, you know, initial consultation? How, what is going to happen when I come to see you? Cause I've never heard of this. So this is a new process for me. Okay. Well, what happens, uh, when my patients come to see me prior, as the appointment is being set, I send them out a comprehensive, uh, health history form. And with that form, I am able to assess their entire clinical picture where they are in terms of their past medical history, their family medical history, their social history, uh, their mental, emotional history, what's happening in diet and lifestyle and environmental, because all of these things are impacting the health in so many different ways. And so when I get an understanding of uh, their various exposures, then when uh, you come in and we're going over this in more detail, and we develop a plan of what is it going to take because many people come with comorbidities, meaning they're not just dealing with one disease, but as the young lady mentioned earlier, there's a multitude of diseases that will arise out of one. And so, uh, so, but because as a naturopathic physician and I'm looking at the root cause, when you begin to rebalance the body, it is not just affecting one disease, it's creating healing throughout the whole body. And so I'm looking at your clinical picture and we're creating a plan to optimize your health and wellness. So powerful. You sound like a doctor. Just so thorough. You, now, how did you become so passionate about this line of work? Um, of course, being a doctor, I know there were years of schooling. So tell us a little bit about your journey of how you got to where you are today. Well, uh, my background is in pastoral care and counseling. I have always had a call on my life to service. I love 
helping people. I love helping people live a better quality of life. And through my years uh, of uh, serving um, as a pastoral care counselor, uh, I got to know clients in terms of uh, what they were dealing with on a mental emotional level. But as time went on, I began to see how some of their dietary choices, their lifestyle choices was also influencing their physical health and different ailments. And I wanted to learn more about, well, I want to be able to help them not just on the mental, emotional level, but also on the physical level. And so that was the beginning of the journey of uh, going to uh, a accredited naturopathic medical school to uh, become licensed and uh, just to become edu educationally uh, trained and uh, clinically trained to understand the physiology and the biochemical makeup of the body so that I could really help them mentally, physically, and emotionally and spiritually. Love it. Were there anyone in your family or is there anyone in your family that maybe suffers from um, one of the common diseases that you're may maybe more passionate about of, of actually helping to cure is the goal of naturopathic service or that is how would you um, say that? Was it like a medicine? Is that an um, opportunity to cure a disease or just control it or balance it? What exactly would it ultimately lead to? Uh, it would ultimately lead to both or either or. Um, and and once again, that's really going to depend on the patient. Uh, everybody is treated like an individual with naturopathic medicine. Uh, the patient, their level of commitment, because you have some people that may just want the pill <laughs> or they may just want it. Yeah. The, yeah. The pharmaceutical drug. Uh, they may just want to uh, feel a little better and do a few things naturally, but not willing to uh, commit to doing everything that it's going to take to heal completely naturally. And once again, it's going to depend on where they are in the disease process when they come to you. If it's if they've been dealing with it uh, for years and years, uh, I mean, uh, it's just really going to vary on the person. So why not just send them back to a regular old doctor if they don't want to go through the process of the natural healing? Like if they just want the actual medication, why not just send them to a regular doctor? Well, sometimes it's not a either or. Uh, I work integratively with other medical doctors. Uh, as a naturopathic physician, I, I'm working with other medical doctors. And so there's some things that the medical doctor may be doing with them and some things that I may be doing that uh, the medical doctors do not have time to go deeper into because since I do have a background of pastoral care and counseling, I do a lot of wellness counseling as well. And so uh, that takes time in terms of understanding and unfolding some of the mental emotional connections to why this disease has manifested in the first place. Hold that thought, Dr. Houston. I believe we have a caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am. Thank you so much for calling in today. Tell us your question or your comment. Uh, first, I'm, my name is Steve. I'm uh, calling from New Orleans. Uh, I've been listening to the show. This is my first time actually uh, hearing about a natural passive, natural passive doctor. Uh huh. I, stu I studied too. All right. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but my <laughs> question is, um, I want to know about the different unique approaches that you might take towards a client that is actually non-traditional. So, what type of actual uh, methods or actual things do you actually do with your clients? What are okay? Just making sure I heard you correctly. What are some things that you do that are non-traditional approaches to dealing with your clients or your patients in this case? I would say the biggest non-traditional <laughs> approach that I do with patients is I sit down with them for an extended amount of time and listen. Your typical uh, appointment with the doctor is going if if they're double booked, it's seven minutes. If uh, they're regularly booked, it's about a 14, 15 minute appointment. Appointments with me are going to last um, uh, approximately an hour, hour, 15 minutes because it's requiring more time to understand your full clinical picture because only you can tell me what's going on with you. Uh, and you have the answers that I'm looking for because 80% of diagnosis is patient history. And so if I haven't taken the time to fully understand 
your uh, medical and, and social history, then I'm not able to make the best uh, recommendations in terms of what uh, what is going on and what is it going to take to get you well at the root level. So it sounds like when I come to you, be truthful. And it's, would you find yourself that a lot of just like our, our special guest with Nicole was saying that a lot of women or a lot of just African-Americans um, don't feel that therapy is a good thing. Do you feel that is the same thing when it comes to, you know, their medical health and, you know, just just going to the doctor? Yes. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, as uh, as women, our priorities tend to be uh, mis construed in terms of our health. It's like uh, looking good on the outside. It's like, you know, uh, we'll spend hundreds of dollars on hair. We're getting our manis and petties every week. Uh, we have a $200 handbag. Pastor is preaching. The pastor is preaching. You just put on your pastoral hat. I'm sorry. Go ahead and speak. Speak to him. And and so we have all of these things that is helping us to look fabulous. But on the inside, uh, I mean, the most beautiful women will come and sit in my chair <laughs> and you you have no idea that they have all of these health issues going on. And so until we make ourselves a, a priority, we make our health of health of something that we value as opposed to looking good, but feeling horrible and everything. It's like the, you can't take all that stuff with you. I mean, if, if I'm visiting, if I'm going to your funeral, none of that is going to be in the casket with you. And, and I hope to not be remembering what you look like, but who you were. And so when we are taking care of ourselves as women, that's going to show just in it, it doesn't require all of that. But if we can do it and in addition to keeping our health as a priority, then that's great. But if not, make your health the priority versus fashion. Make your health the priority versus fashion. Pastor, what's your favorite scripture? I don't know why I'm going here. No, what is your favorite scripture on maybe healing or something that you use? Because I know you you bring Jesus out when you speak into your pain. I know you do. It just I feel it in your spirit. So it's just a part of the healing. We know Jesus is healing. When I say that name, I feel healing. So what are some, I guess, scriptures or some things you'd be saying to these high fashion women with these nice bags and Louboutins and they sitting there in shambles? Go on, tell us. I would, my favorite sip scripture that's applicable to this, it would be, uh, Romans, uh, 12 to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Speak it again. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you renew the minds of your, your patients through this medic medicine, this process. And you start by understanding. So we're thinking about our thoughts. Can you think yourself to health, a better health? Yes, staying positive, staying open, uh, just uh, staying on on purpose uh, and being true to yourself is so vitally important because when we're not, it uh, creates an imbalance within ourselves. And when we are out of balance uh, mentally and emotionally, everything else is out of balance. Now, the theme of the for the month is hot and on top. And we've been talking about defying the odds. Now, just really quickly, while we have some time, are there any odds that you've defied in your life that you would want to share um, to possibly encourage that that woman who's still looking at you like, you know what, I want to go see it, but I don't know. Um, but what are those things that you could probably share with the, the viewers right now? Uh, for my own life, I. um haven't really experienced any major health challenges. And so uh, as far as defying the odds, the greatest odds that I would say that I have had to defy um, were academic odds. Well, you did go to medical school, so I can understand that. I mean, I totally can understand that. But what about some, okay, if not health, issues what about you know relationship or is there anything that you can kind of share that helped you get to where you are uh what helped to get me where I am is um just really uh a supportive community uh has been vitally important just having people to uh, that believed in me in times, even when I didn't believe in myself, uh, people that 
have been speaking truth and, and life in, into me uh, and encouraging me on the way uh, with uh, just so many uh, various trials and, and tribulations because I have a strong entrepreneurial spirit. And so just in um, getting my uh, life going and everything, there's just so many more battles that an entrepreneur is going to face than someone that is going to a job. And so um, it is uh, during that time that uh, people would just uh, help me to stay focused on the vision. And, and that helped me to defy the odds. That's a beautiful, beautiful testimony. And that's exactly what we need. Now we're running out of time, but I want everyone to know how to get in contact with you. We want to come get our consultations. Are you on Facebook, social media? Tell us everywhere that we can find you, Dr. Houston. You can find me at www.journeyofwellness.org, www.journeyofwellness.org. And I'm also on Facebook as Journey of Wellness Natural Medicine Center. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Dr. Houston, did you enjoy that, Nicole? Good information, mind, body, and spirit. Thank you so much, LV, and thank you so much, Dr. Houston. Dr. Houston, any last thing, words from you? I just want to say that it is important that people trust in the healing power of nature. Uh, there is a place for all kinds of medicine, uh, all types of uh, powers of, of healing energy um, and resources. And if we return to that which was given to us, uh, there would be a better outcome in terms of not just having better health but having a better quality of life because that's what it's all about so true so true at the end if you don't have the quality then what is it all for anyway right you know you don't want to be here and not have the quality to be able to enjoy the different things and the fruits of your labor and so as always we say here you know we want you to be open to the topics that we have here be open to the discussion that you hear you may not agree you may not like it you may not even understand a lot of it but we hope that tonight you gain some insight on how you can be better do better and feel better and work diligently to defy the odds remember that whatever you've been through it doesn't matter whatever you're going through it doesn't matter Whatever you will go through in the future, it doesn't matter. It does matter, but it doesn't matter because if you trust, know, and believe that your healing is just a journey away, you can always remain hot and on top and defy the odds. We thank you so much for joining us here tonight at the Nicole B. Jackson Show. Join us next week for our final show of season one. We're having a party, y'all. So y'all definitely want to be here. Um, and if you can't be here live in the studio, be sure to make sure you tune in to watch the show. We appreciate you uh, for being our supporters and being here. We want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Plug Me Into You Radio. Of course, we'd like to thank People TV. We want to thank American Honey Company, Southern Boutique, and uh, Lyrics Cozy Kitchen, our hospitality sponsors who take care of our team each and every Wednesday. And again, special thank you and shout out to Dr. Juana Houston, to KS Oliver, and to my awesome Ride or die, my Gail, <laughs> Arthur, Lakia Brandenburg, LB. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Let me hear it now. Let me hear it now. Woo!